Watch you guys got another video Windows 11 24H2 install or in place upgrade on unsupported hardware with Rufus. That's what we're going to be talking about and showing you today. Now, there's quite a few people that do have old PCs that don't uh, run Windows 11, and also Microsoft have really stringent uh, system requirements to install Windows 11. Now, we're on Windows 10 here. And I'm going to show you an in-place upgrade here, but you can also use this method to install Windows 11, a clean install using Rufus 4.6, which is the new release from Rufus. And we'll take a look at it in this video. So if you head over to the Rufus website, you can create a bootable USB flash drive the easy way using Rufus 4.6. And this will give you all of the ability to remove all of the system requirements that Microsoft require. You can use the install version or you can use the portable version, which you can see listed on the screen right here. I'll be using the portable version. If we look at the change log on this brand new version, you can see that version 4.6 is new and it's added some new features. Basically, a wrapper to bypass the Windows 11 24H2 in in place upgrade restrictions. So you can now bypass it and use an in-place upgrade rather than do a fresh install. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. But remember, you can also do a fresh install if you want to. We're also going to talk about the, some of the things you can do and you can't do with Windows 11 and also with Rufus 4.6. So let's go ahead and download the latest version of Rufus 4.6 Portable right here. You can use the install version if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and download this right here. Once we've got this downloaded, we can click on it and we can open it up. So I'm going to say yes here to open it up. It says Rufus update policy. I'm going to say yes here to make sure that we get all of the latest updates. Now, I don't have a USB flash drive plugged in right here, but if you do want to use a USB flash drive, it needs to be at least eight gigabytes or more in size. So let's go ahead and plug in a USB flash drive. Mine is a 32 gigabyte version, but as long as you've got eight, eight gigabytes, you should be fine. Next, we need to download the ISO from Microsoft's website. This is gonna be the ISO that we're gonna be using for our install or in-place upgrade. Now you can use the download section right here, but I'm gonna go straight over and go to Microsoft's website and download it from there. Now, once you get to Microsoft's website, you'll notice that the current version is Windows 11 2024 update, which is the version 24H2. They're not offering the 23H2 anymore. You have to use their latest version. So we're going to go all the way down to where it says download Windows 11 disk image ISO for X64 devices. You need to choose the multi edition and we're going to click on download. And now it's going to ask us to select our language. You can choose whatever one you want here. I'm going to choose English International. And then we're going to click Confirm. And it's then going to validate this. And it's going to then give us the download link for the 64-bit version. So let me go ahead. I seem to have started two there, but we'll close one of those off. And download Windows 11 24H2. So once this has come down, what we're going to do is we need to find out what system we have. So if you've got a computer that's pretty old, you need to check the BIOS mode, and you can do that by typing system information in Windows. This will basically give you an indication whether you're running a UEFI or whether you're running MBR. Once we've got this set, we're going to select our ISO. So let's go ahead and do that right here. I've got two of them here, but they're both the same. So let me just select this one here and click Open. And from here, we're going to leave this as a standard Windows installation. As you can see here, the other one is Windows to go. So we're going to leave that as standard Windows installation. The partition scheme is GPT UEFI, non-CSM, or if you've got a really old system, it will probably be MBR BIOS or UEFI-CSM. I'm going to be using GPT here because it's got secure boot and a bunch of other features and it's more secure but if you've got a really old computer you're more than likely going to have MBR. Now really Windows 11 prefers to be installed on a GPT 
uh, UEFI system because obviously it's a more modern operating system. So choose which one suits you. Now remember, some UEFI systems do not support Windows 11, so don't get confused thinking you have a UEFI BIOS and why isn't it supporting Windows 11? Because there's loads of other reasons why you can't install Windows 11, and that's probably a separate video in itself. So we're just trying to keep it nice and simple. I'm going to leave the file system as NTFS, and then click on Start, and this is where we can customize our Windows user experience. This is going to remove the requirements for Gigabyte Plus RAM, Secure Boot, and also TPM 2.0 remove the requirements for an online Microsoft account. We're going to leave that as is. And you can create a local account with the username of your choice. I'm going to leave this as is, which is Brightech, as you can see here. You can change it to whatever you like. And then we can set this up for regional options to the same values of this user if I wanted to. And you can also disable data collection, skip privacy questions. This makes the installation a lot quicker and it basically disables all those privacy questions that uh, you get bombarded with during the installation. We can disable BitLocker automatic device encryption as well, and I'm going to disable that because I don't want BitLocker installed or running on the system and encrypting my drive. So I'm going to check mark all of these like so, and then we're going to click OK, and it's then going to give us the next option, which is to erase all of the data on the USB flash drive. I'm going to click OK here. If there is data on there, it will be erased and it will start to install Windows 11 24H2 onto that USB flash drive and make it bootable. So you can either boot to this USB flash drive and do a clean install of Windows 11 24H2, or you can go and do an in-place upgrade. So first, number one, very old PCs with CPUs that have lack of requirement ISA Instructions Set Architecture, that stands for, won't be able to bypass the requirement to install Windows 11 24H2. Rufus 4.6 is required for an in-place upgrade on Windows 11 24H2. Also, Windows 11 24H2 only works on processors that come with the POP CNT and SSE 4.2, and thus no bypass method or app or any software or scripts can help you in such a case where you're trying to bypass the hardware requirements that Microsoft have in place. They can continue to use Windows 11 23H2 if they want to, but you're not going to be able to use any sort of method to bypass and install Windows 11 24H2 on them old systems. A clean install or an in-place upgrade works well with Rufus 4.6. We're going to be doing an in-place upgrade, which is basically staying on Windows 10 here and keeping all of our programs and applications and also all of our settings and also all of our data. We're going to open up the USB flash drive here and double click on the setup executable file, which is on the USB flash drive, which we just created. Say yes to the user account control here, and this will then start the upgrade or installation process of Windows 11. You can see here, install Windows 11. So what we're going to do here is click Next. So once you've read all the information here, we're going to click on Next. And this is going to get some updates ready for us. And it's going to go ahead and get our PC ready for the upgrade process. So it's going to restart the Windows 11 uh, setup. Now remember, you can boot to this USB flash drive and do a fresh clean install of Windows if you prefer to do that and race all the drives and install Windows 11 24H2 on unsupported hardware. Next, we need to accept these terms and conditions here. So let's go ahead and click on Accept. And you can read all of this at your own leisure, but let's go ahead and click Accept. It's going to make sure we're ready to install. It's going to get some more updates. And then basically what it's going to do is check that we have enough storage on the drive ready to install Windows 11 24H2 or upgrade to Windows 11 24H2. It's going to install Windows 11 Pro for us. It's also going to keep our personal files and apps. And it's basically going to go ahead and start that process when we click on the install button. Now, it's important to remember that backing up your data is your 
responsibility. Don't rely on Microsoft to back up your data for you and then reinstall it during the installation or upgrade process. So we're going to install Windows 11. I'm going to skip all of this because you've seen this all before. And once this is all done and gone through the process, it will skip a lot of stuff and give you a local account. And then you should have something looking like this once it's finished the installation process and upgraded to Windows 11 24 H2. As you can see here, all our data is still here. And that's basically how you can do an in-place upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 24 H2. And this is also how you can do a fresh install of Windows 11 24 H2 onto a PC that is not supported. Now, remember to read all the instructions that I put in the video to make sure you understand exactly what that means and whether you can do an in-place upgrade or whether you can do a fresh install of Windows 11 24 H2 on your system. This is not a video about whether you should install Windows 11 24 H2. This is just a video on how to do an in-place upgrade or a clean install uh, for Windows 11 24 H2 on unsupported hardware. Now, whether you should install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware is at your own risk because Microsoft can and have done made strict changes to Windows 11 in the past and this could obviously cause you a lot of issues if you're running Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. There is other options out there like Linux and also Windows 10 still has a bit of life in it until October 2025 so there is no rush and there's also LTSE versions of Windows 10 and there's other versions that you can use to get updates for Windows 10, but it is a paid method. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support, and I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll catch you on the Discord server. Bye for now.